a social media conference for this year. I felt interested in it because of the fact that it was focused towards transforming the political and social landscape in Uganda. We started it last year not because there's no discussion on social media. We felt that there was a gap in systematically discussing the other dimension, which is the social and the political dimension. I have an um, uh, interest in how it's developing in Uganda and how it's affecting the lives of almost everyone. Um, I said uh, recently when we're in the election period that if someone is to look at how to use social media properly, they can win 10% of the electorate. So as a journalist, I'm obviously interested in uh, the impact that social media will have and are having on traditional media. But as a citizen, I am also intellectually inclined to be interested in the contest between those in power and those who are governed. And now social media allows that interaction. The blockade of social media in itself was not a beginning of intolerance, but a continuation of an intolerant state. The views that you see on social media are actually the views of the people who are, who, who are the, the views of Ugandans who may not be able to express themselves. And we cannot underscore the role of these few voices on social media. I don't think that the government's first role is to say, let's, uh, let's block this space. It, it's about letting people express themselves, then be able to identify those examples that violate the, 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 the laws of the, of the country. What stands out as we integrate social media? I think, I think we're past the integration. Social media is here to stay, technology is here to stay. Um, and it is already influencing our lives. I am constantly amazed at how smart ordinary Ugandans are and how switched on they are with global trends and with emerging things. And it always leaves me with a question as to why that kind of engagement and eloquence and intellect aren't really visible in the conduct of public affairs in the country. So, in a way, it's a sad commentary in the sense that you come to a conference like this and you see so much smartness and then you step out of the building and then you're back in 1982. Those who have a clear objective, whether they're running for office, whether they're trying to you know, lobby for legislation, are the ones who will benefit from social media. Those who are there because everyone else is there, you know, will continue to be passengers or participants rather than contestants.